do you manage to go so fast on bends? Well, we just lean inwards. of trains, normal trains, it is not possible to lean inwards on curves. The only alternative is to reduce speed so as to contain the effects of centrifugal force within acceptable limits. Obviously, too high a speed would cause very unpleasant disturbances. On a 500 meter radius curve at a speed of 100 kilometers an hour, the centrifugal force not compensated for by the normal banking of the rails is only 6% of the weight, and thus hardly noticeable. But already at 113 kilometers an hour, it rises to 10%, resulting in discomfort. And at 125 kilometers, it is 14% and no longer acceptable. At 135 kilometers an hour and 144, the centrifugal force is 18 and 22 percent respectively. It is then the curves that limit the top speeds of trains. To eliminate them would however necessitate enormous expenditure for every minute saved on the fastest trains. In many cases in fact it would be cheaper to build completely new lines. Instead of eliminating the curves, it is nevertheless possible to compensate for centrifugal force not only by banking the rails, but also by varying the angle of the train itself. That is the solution to this difficult problem adopted by the Fiat, working in collaboration with the Italian state railways and the Spanish rail network Renfe. Since the spring of 1976, two prototype electric trains have been running on the 3,000 volt continuous current rail networks of Spain and Italy. Each train consists of four cars, making up a total length of over 100 meters. There is accommodation for 180 passengers with kitchen and refreshment bar. The interiors of the cars are designed for the highest comfort. Reclining, revolving seats that can be adjusted in relation to the direction of the train. Very effective soundproofing. And air conditioning. The transversal section has been studied so as not to exceed outline limits during angle variation. The Italian State Railway train, whose full load weight is only 180 tons, is structured with electrically welded special light alloy sections. The high coefficient of aerodynamic penetration of the streamlined front section is the fruit of considerable computerized research and lengthy wind tunnel trials. The Renfer train, built under Fiat license by the CAF company in its Beersheim and Saragossa workshops, 
is identical to the Italian version as regards propulsion and the control system for angle variation. The greater width of the Spanish train has made possible an even more comfortable interior arrangement. Thanks to its external and internal finish, its elegant lines, functionality and exceptional performance, the new train is very much a symbol of innovation and progress for Spain's railways. An experimental version of the vehicle exactly reproducing the dimensions and mass distribution of one of the four units of the definitive train was built much earlier in order to study in depth all the many aspects of the new system. The interior was fitted out as a laboratory equipped with all the most modern apparatus to record a complex series of data concerning angle variation and other dynamic characteristics. The vehicle is able to swing 10 degrees in either direction towards the center of the curve, thus making it possible to travel at 144 kilometers an hour, for example, on a 500 meter radius curve, suffering a transversal effect no longer of 22%, but of 6% only. All that part of the vehicle in which the passengers, the crew and other personnel are accommodated is involved in the inclination, whereas the bogey and the pantograph keep to the original angle. The transom on the bogey has all the freedom of movement required for good suspension, but not the angle variation. The latter only applies to the superstructure shell, which is connected to the underframe by a system of rods permitting a swinging movement along the longitudinal axis. The swinging movement is assisted by four hydraulic pistons placed between the ends of each underframe and the reinforced elements in the superstructure shell. Maximum cylinder extension is 250 millimeters, which compensates for a banking insufficiency of 200 millimeters. The pantograph current collector must obviously maintain its central position with regard to the contact wire, and having to operate at a speed of 250 kilometers an hour is supported by a very rigid structure which rests directly on the bogey frame. is supplied by eight 220 kilowatt electric motors placed lengthways beneath the superstructure shell. One axle for each bogey is commanded by its relative motor by means of a cardan shaft. Despite the considerable dimensions of the parts which make up the bogies, very limited tolerances are called for, given the high speed involved, which means precision engineering of the highest order.
keep the load well distributed over the wheels in spite of the inevitable inclinations in the rails, the bogey underframe is in two parts, linked with ball joints. The exceptionally large spiral springs which are responsible for the vertical and lateral suspension of the superstructure shell are the result of considerable research and testing with special machines. As with all the materials used that might affect safety standards, the secondary suspension springs undergo exhaustive fatigue tests. The wheels, which thanks to their special ribbing combine lightness and resistance, have to have a minimum unbalance corresponding to about one-fifth of that allowed on the wheels of normal passenger rail cars. Braking performance for these trains operating at high speeds must be especially efficacious. In addition to the rheostatic system which acts on the motor axles, all the axles are controlled by the disc brake and the electromagnetic brake applied to each bogey for emergency situations. On curves taken at high speeds, a compressed air recall command operated by the variation in angle itself balances the centrifugal force and continues the horizontal outward shift of the superstructure shell. Of the four pneumatic cylinders, the two rear ones, in relation to the direction, function at intervals, so as to reduce the horizontal reaction on the first axle. stabilization, anti-hunting and vertical damping are obtained by means of separate devices, each of which is independently set. The building of the bogies, carried out for both prototypes at the Fiat's Savigliano Railworks, necessitated the solving of a whole series of problems which had never previously had to be dealt with. Problems arising from the considerable movements that the various parts of the superstructure shell make with respect to the bogies during the angle variation operation. The shell bogey connection calls for more than usual care in order to maintain optimum traveling performance at high speeds. Angle variation must be effected while the train is passing over the transitional stretch of track between the straight and the full curve. As at top speeds this stretch of track can be covered in just two seconds, the inclination maneuver has to begin without delay. Gyroscope parallel to the first axle, an accelerometer, and a tachometrical generator emit signals which immediately command angle variation both on entering and on leaving the curve. The signal from the accelerometer records not only the centrifugal force, but also all the parasitic accelerations caused by track irregularities. These disturbances are eliminated with a low frequency filter. Nevertheless, the diagram of the centrifugal force is delayed by almost a second. The 
gyroscope parallel to the first axle records the speed at which the level of one rail varies with respect to the other. This signal, severely disturbed by the continual slight unevennesses to be found even in the best laid tracks, is integrated to indicate immediately the beginning and the development of the transitional stretch of track. From this new signal, produced only at the start of a curve and not on the straight or in full curve, a boosting voltage is generated, which in conjunction with the filtered accelerometric diagram is able to anticipate it sufficiently so as to operate the angle variation command upon entering and leaving the curve. In about 500 journeys, the test train and the prototypes have traveled 80,000 kilometers, with thousands of data readings both on winding lines and longer straight lines on which speeds of 250 kilometers an hour have frequently been obtained. The vehicle's dynamic behavior has been carefully studied and adjusted in order to ensure exceptionally satisfactory stability under all conditions. With angle variation, about 250 millimeters of banking insufficiency are absorbed leaving the passenger with a sensation, hardly noticeable in fact, corresponding to no more than 70 millimeters. The lateral thrust, measured with a special dynamometric wheel, is well within safety limits. The 30% increase in absolute speed on curves means an improvement in commercial speed of 15 to 20% on very winding lines. While on lines with long straight stretches and occasional curves limited in radius, there is a 10 to 15% gain. Departing from Rome, the variable angle train would reach Ancona with a 40 kilometer lead over a normal fast train. In the case of Reggio Calabria, the lead would be 120 kilometers. In the case of Milan, it would be 90. Of Turin, 130. And of Venice, 90. Altogether, a great step forward in reducing high-speed passenger transportation times and in increasing the convenience of rail travel. Thank you.